And and uh, each of these diseases you can think of as, uh, and also including terrorist attacks and school shootings, for example, things which lead to fatalities, you can look at as problems that could be solved. And some problems are harder to solve than others. I mean, that's part of the equation. So maybe if you look at these diseases, if you look at heart disease or cancer or Alzheimer's or just uh, uh, like schizophrenia and obesity, debut, like uh, not necessarily things that kill you, but affect the quality of life, which problems are solvable, which aren't, which are harder to solve, which aren't. I, lo I love your question because it puts it in the context of a global um, effort rather than just a local effort. So basically, if you look at the global aspect, exercise and nutrition are two interventions that we can, as a society, make a much better job at. So if you think about sort of the availability of cheap food, it's extremely high in calories, it's extremely detrimental for you, like a lot of processed food, et cetera. So if we change that equation, and as a society, we made availability of healthy food much, much easier, and charged a burger at McDonald's, the price that it costs on the health system, then people would actually start buying more healthy uh, foods. So basically that's sort of a societal intervention, if you wish. In the same way, increasing empathy, increasing education, increasing the social framework and support would basically lead to fewer suicides. It would lead to fewer murders. It would lead to fewer you know, deaths overall. Um, so, you know, that's something that we as a society can do. You can, th you can also think about external factors versus internal factors. So the external factors are basically communicable diseases like COVID, like the flu, et cetera. And the internal factors are basically things like, you know, cancer and Alzheimer's where basically your, your genetics will eventually, you know, drive you there. Um, and then of course, with all of these factors, every single disease has both a genetic component and environmental component. So heart disease, you know, huge genetic contribu contribution. Alzheimer's, it's like, you know, 60% uh, plus genetic. So I think it's like 79% heritability. So that basically means that genetics alone explains 79% of Alzheimer's incidence. Oh. And yes, there's a 21% environmental component where you could basically enrich your cognitive environment, enrich your social interactions, read more books, learn a foreign language, go running, you know, sort of have a more fulfilling life. All of that will actually decrease Alzheimer's, but there's a limit to how much that, that can impact because of the huge genetic footprint.